Good morning. Uh, I am Dr. M. Sudhir, senior gastroenterologist working uh, at Pace Hospital, High Tech City, Hyderabad. In today's discussion about inflammatory bowel disease, I am going, just going to highlight some salient points about it. Inflammatory bowel disease is a common condition which we see almost day in and day out. It is very difficult to manage as well as patients point of view it's also a little troublesome because they'll be suffering from all the symptoms for quite some time and then it is uh, really challenging for the patient as well as for the doctor. In this talk we'll try to highlight what are the causes and how to treat the, the such cases. There are many causes for inflammatory bowel disease. One of the postulations is uh, an immunological factor. See, actually, the immunity of a person, normal person, is very strong to prevent such diseases. Whenever the immunity of the patient goes down, the intestine also tries to react for any extraneous uh, substance and then that causes irritation in the bubble and causes a lot of immunological disturbance in the bubble manifesting as loose motions, blood in the stool as well as pain in the abdomen. So, these are the common manifestations. Apart from this, there are other causes also, but the main factor is the immunological background. This immunological background, why is it deranged in such patients? It's very difficult to say. So many postulations have been put forth. It could be the local immunity, it could be the microflora of the intestine, or it could be the general systemic immunity. As I said, you know, intermittent bubble disease is uh, the cause is not known properly. So many things have been put forth. So one of this is the immunological factors, which I have already dealt with. The other factors are if the patient uh, has some triggering factors, either it could be in the form of food or any other infection, this can be aggravated. So apart from this, there are others kind of like a stress mediated or you know, patient who having depression or uh, the patient is a smoker. Such patients also can lead to. Uh, the inflammatory, inflammatory bowel disease and apart from this alteration in the microflora of the gut also cause one of the main factors for inflammatory bowel disease. The other causes mainly because you know this instance is mainly seen in the western countries. In India also it is seen off late for the last one two decades in more uh, numbers. So why the western population is more affected? Again it is because of the western lifestyle, because of the food habits, because of the altered uh, substances in the some ingredients are also being incriminated in the food habits and then the patient's microflora is also altered in the western population compared to the Indian. So all these factors are important uh, for the pathogenesis and causation of uh, inflammatory bowel disease. When a patient is affected with inflammatory bowel disease, the patient can manifest with uh, the common manifestations are you know patient can have stomach pain, can have loose motions, sometimes blood in the motions and mucus in the stools, bloating sensation, gas type of feeling and then sometimes in a severe case, you know, patient can have a high fever and in long standing inflammatory bowel disease, the patient can lose weight, they can have malabsorption, they can have a, a, a iron deficiency anemia, they can have you know, uh, other vitamin deficiencies and significant uh, weight loss. So all these features and apart from this, the patient can also have extra intestinal manifestations. Sometimes the patient can have arthritis and eye changes or uh, systemic symptoms like fatigue. As I told you, this is a challenging case for a patient as well as for the treating doctor because there is no proper cure for this uh, uh, condition because cure means what I put it this way, the patient cannot stop the medicines and be off the uh, disease on a lifelong basis. This has to be monitored every time periodically and the patient also has been taking periodical medications. So uh, initially depending on the type of disease, the type of disease or the uh, staging of the disease, the treatment modalities changes. So predominantly we have two types of inflammatory bowel disease, Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. So there is a slight variation in the treatment aspect but uh, pre uh, predominantly first uh, for foremost is we have uh, uh, amino salicylates in that the methylamine is one of the main uh, ingredient which we can give for uh, such conditions. Starting with the store of small dose, we can step up increasing the dose over a period of time. This is the baseline medicine what we give in such conditions. The next step of medicine is if the patient is not responding, then we will have to go for a, 
uh, in a severe case sometimes a steroid uh, administration has to be given and the next level of medicines we have uh, uh, immunosuppressants and later subsequent is a biologicals all these things are depending on the stage of the degrees if the patient is not responding to the earlier the uh, aminosalicylates or steroid then we'll have to go for the biological or immunosuppressants now as these four uh, types of uh, treatment we have uh, uh, mesalamine and then uh, steroids then we go for the uh, immunological treatment in immunological treatment we have this uh, uh, cyclosporine mercaptopurine and azathioprine of all the three azathioprine is one of the most commonly used because of its uh, more or less more safer than other medicines and the side effects and the profile is also much less and the patients also respond after a few weeks of starting azathioprine then you know <coughs> The next level <coughs> it goes to the uh, biologicals of the main thing is um, in the infliximab. Infliximab is a little high end uh, uh, biological and which is also commonly given for such severe cases of uh, inflammatory bubble disease. And this has to be very carefully given so that you know <coughs> patient may not have a secondary side effects because of this and we will have to rule out some other existing conditions in the patient to, before we give infliximab. See, one of the main factors is, you know, is a genetic uh, predisposition. If the patient's family, one of the family is having inflammatory bubbles, there's a chance on the other family members or other siblings to also develop this. So, almost one in four uh, IBD cases, you know, other siblings can be affected. So, this is mainly because of the genetic predisposition. So, they have a genetic background in the body, in the system, in the genes that they are prone for it. So, such patient has to be picked up early and then see that you know we have a proper lifestyle proper diet and proper gut microflora to be put and then the patient can be monitored periodically so as to prevent an exacerbation of ibd in such asymptomatic patients apart from this we will have to have on a healthy lifestyle that is very important because most of the cases which are seen uh, occurring is in the western uh, western uh, countries and the same culture is being followed in the indian subcontinent so here also we are seeing so main thing is, is try to be indianized to our uh, culture habits about the food habits and uh, uh, other sort of a le le less stress and other things. So, this is uh, one of the two main features by which we can prevent. Inflammatory bowel disease is uh, generally not life threatening, but uh, routinely, most of the cases what we see are uh, early and uh, what you call uh, middle stage stage you know the patient will have stomach pain vomitings and then blood emotions and uh, weight loss but in some severe cases can happen and they can be really life threatening and such cases may require admission in the hospital so such patients are you know and the patient is having a toxic megacolon and the toxic megacolon is a condition there is an acute dilatation of the colon because a lot of inflammation is there and the stored colon becomes very thin and hugely dilated and the patient has to be hospitalized. Patient will be in a toxic state and sometimes there will be impending perforation. So, we will have to be admitted and then intensive treatment with steroids and other uh, things have to be given. Apart from this toxic bigger colon, the patient is having an acute severe ulcerative colitis. Again, there will be severe blood loss. So, when the severe blood loss is there, the patient has to be hospitalized and depending on the blood levels, the hemoglobin, the blood transfusion has to be started and intensive care management has to be done. So, these are the main two uh, two main uh, indications where you know it can be a life-threatening emergency. A lack of treatment, delaying the treatment can lead to high mortality. <laughs>